Today's video is brought to you by Paperlike, which makes writing or drawing on your iPad Pro feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and today we're gonna be comparing the 11-inch iPad Pro to the brand new iPad Mini 5. Now in this video, I'm not really concerned about specs. I'm more interested in how these two devices compare in terms of what you can accomplish using them. Like, are there any instances where the iPad Mini can act as more of an iPad Pro Mini and replace your iPad Pro. It's gonna be really interesting because it's a lot closer than most people realize. Just so you know what to expect, we're gonna talk about whether or not the Mini can turn into a Mini Pro or a Pro Mini. We're gonna talk about five tasks that I use the iPad Pro for the most and how the Mini can handle each of those. And I'm also gonna talk about which device is better for travel and mobility. Down in the description, I put some timestamps, which is kinda of like the table of contents for this video. So if you wanna skip around and find what's most interesting to you, you know what to do. Now, obviously, you buy an iPad Pro if you want the best of the best in terms of specs and hardware. And traditionally, you buy an iPad Mini, on the other hand, if you like that smaller form factor or if it's just what fits your budget. Those are pretty much the reasons. We all know that already. But what I really want to do is talk about what you can do with each and maybe break some misconceptions in the process. We're talking about why you get each and differences. I just have to go on a little bit of a rant here before we get too far because these look different. And that's one of the big things here. Like if you're a self-conscious person or if you really care about what other people think about you, you may not want to be seen with the iPad mini because it looks old with those huge bezels and it's smaller. And there's something about having the latest, greatest, biggest, most powerful iPad that lets you flex all over people. You shouldn't be caring what people think about you anyways, one way or another. Subscribers, technicians, you guys already know I'm a huge iPad Pro fan. And I have been for a long time. And as I thought about it, I really use my iPad Pro for five main things, among other things. For starters, I do a lot of typing, like script writing, note taking, emails. I also do some drawing and handwriting, and I do some 4K video editing, and I do some gaming and some media consuming, you know, like YouTube, news, web surfing. Now, objectively, I wanna go through each of those activities, and I'll talk about a few others at the end, and let you know, can I also do them on the iPad mini? What's it like? How bad is it? Or how surprisingly good might it be? But real quick, I just wanna point out that the iPad mini is basically a smaller iPad Air just without that smart connector. And the iPad Air itself is basically a replacement for the 10 and a half inch iPad Pro, the last iPad Pro. The Mini and the Air have the same processor, just different screen sizes. The A12 chip is the same thing that's powering the current gen iPhone XR and XS, so anything that those phones are capable of, the Mini is also capable of. Now it's not as powerful as the iPad Pro, but it is actually quite powerful. Think about it. It. For just a second, the iPad mini comes very close to almost being kind of like an iPad Pro mini, just without the embellishments. No edge to edge display, no face ID, no tap to wake, etc. But none of those things actually make a difference when it comes to what the iPad can do, or better yet, what you can do, what you can accomplish with the iPad, do you see where I'm going here? On the mini, you now have Apple Pencil support, even if it is that first generation tech. And you can use a Bluetooth keyboard no problem for your typing needs. And there are some nice professional Bluetooth keyboards that the iPad mini 5 can use. And I'm gonna link some up down in the description for you. But yeah, I think a lot of people are gonna be surprised at the big things that this little machine can actually do. Okay, in terms of things that I use the iPad to do, me personally, I wanna start with writing because for any pro, you're gonna be doing a lot of writing, whether you're running a business or you're a full-time student, you're gonna be typing a lot. So I wanna describe my setup for each of these iPads and which one I like better. On my 11 inch iPad Pro, I'm still using the Logitech Slim Folio Pro that I recently reviewed because I really do like that typing experience. It's pro to the pro pro. For the iPad mini, I picked up the Logitech Keys to Go Bluetooth keyboard, which is highly portable, just like the mini itself. It's cheaper than the pro keyboard and it comes with a detachable iPad holder slash stand. Of these two keyboards, I definitely prefer typing on the Slim Folio Pro. You might've suspected that, it makes sense because it's built to be amazing and it is a good experience. So let's just go ahead and call it luxurious yet 
bulky. That said, the keys to go that I got for the Mini does just about everything you could ask an ultra light and ultra portable keyboard to do. The keys have nice spacing, they don't feel cramped, although they're kind of weird to type on, honestly. But you do get that essential row of shortcut keys across the top. This I'm just gonna go ahead and label functional, but not as fun to use. See that? Functional, fun, got that in there. Whenever I'm typing, I almost always have two apps open at once. An app to write in and an app to reference. I'm usually writing in Bear these days, which is taking up 75% of the screen on the left, while referencing notes in Drafts, which is taking up 25% of the screen over to the right. Now, obviously, a bigger screen is better from multitasking because you can see more of each app, but that doesn't mean that the Mini is unusable here. It's definitely usable. It kind of only seems goofy in your head, like mentally, like that would be weird to multitask on that little mini screen. But once you do it, you're like, oh yeah, I can do it. Now, if you're just writing in one app at a time, no split screen, there's really nothing to complain about on the Mini. You can write, it's functional. It's just a slight inconvenience to have to use a Bluetooth keyboard and not have the option for a smart connector. While we're talking about typing, we do of course have to mention thumb typing because you can do it on the Mini and you can't really do it on the Pro. There's just something about the size of the Mini that makes typing with your thumbs just flow. It's magical. So if you ever find yourself without a keyboard, this could be a key advantage. And yeah, I mean, it's cooler, it's better than just typing away with your thumbs on your phone. Processor wise, writing just isn't gonna slow you down on the Mini in the slightest. So if you do wanna do some writing and you wanna go ultra portable or you're just wanting to save some money, the Mini is completely functional. All right, let's talk about drawing and handwriting next. Basically, using the Apple Pencil. Now, of course, the iPad Pro gets to use that second generation, newer, better Apple Pencil too. More convenient, I should add. While the Mini is stuck using the older, kind of awkward <laughs> Apple Pencil number one, which, even though it's kind of weird, actually works pretty good still. Now, screen size here makes a pretty big difference when it comes to using the Apple Pencil. Writing or drawing on the 11-inch iPad Pro feels more like using a full sheet of paper, whereas writing or drawing on the iPad Mini feels more like using a half a sheet of actual real paper. Luckily though, you can scroll and zoom, so the Mini's Apple Pencil experience isn't nearly as bad as I originally thought it was gonna be. And like I said in my review, I kinda just ended writing a little bit bigger when I was making notes. You have infinite space to write though, so that doesn't really matter like it would on a real piece of paper. There's almost something kinda fun about writing on the Mini. It's hard to explain. I don't know how to explain it. It's just kinda fun. It's decidedly less fun though to draw on the Mini, I think, but it is more doable than you would think. And yeah, I really wish the original Apple Pencil wasn't so slippery feeling. It's always been that way. The second you take it out of the box, it just feels like greasy almost. And that can make it a little bit less fun to use, especially compared to the newer Apple Pencil, which just feels really great. Again, I don't wanna bash it too hard because it's totally usable. And let's not forget that you can spin the new Apple Pencil kind of like a fidget spinner. And I made a whole video about it, which nobody really cared about or was that interested in, but it was a whole lot of fun. And it could be a lot of fun for you when you're bored in class or in the meeting, right? Just sit there spinning. Next up, we're gonna talk about 4K video editing. Why 4K video editing? Because it takes more power to edit in 4K. Anything can basically edit a 1080p HD video. So 4K seems like the real test for these two, especially the mini. And there's one program that really is the pro program that the pros really use, pro, pro, pro. And it's Luma Fusion. And you know what? It works great on all iOS devices, whether iPads or iPhones. And if it works great on iPhones for editing 4K, how well do you think it's gonna work on an iPad mini with the same processor? If you do a quick search on YouTube, you'll find some other videos where people are showing you that the new mini can edit 4K footage. It's just not even a big deal. But there's more to discuss here than the processors and the screen sizes. Like what about the ports? The Pro of course uses the USB-C port, which is new, while the mini still uses a lightning connector. And does that matter? Well, at the moment, you can't hook up an external wired USB-C storage solution for editing photos or videos on the iPads, whether you have USB-C or Lightning. So in that capacity, it doesn't really matter that much. What you can do is use something like the Narbox SSD or the Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro. I always thought that was too long of a name, but I actually nailed it, so ha. Uh, but both of those are wireless and they integrate with LumaFusion natively. 
so they work really well and are pretty quick. That said, the iPad Pro will be able to connect to some nice USB-C external monitors and LumaFusion 2.0 will have external display support. Now, since the Apple Pencil sort of acts as your mouse in many ways on the iPad, the same things that make using the Apple Pencil V2 better and more convenient for writing also apply here for video editing. Obviously, gaming is an important aspect of many people's iPad experience. In the iPad Pro, there's really nothing that you can throw at it that it can't handle. It's stellar, phenomenal even. But what about the Mini? Well, the Mini can play Fortnite and Elder Scrolls Blades. What else do you really need to know? If it's on iOS and you wanna play it on the Mini, you can play it, fine. What about screen size? We're gonna use an example. My all time most played and loved iOS game is probably Galcon 2. You guys have heard me mention it from time to time. It's super underrated and the developer basically abandoned it, but it's really underground, it's really fun, and that just kinda adds to the appeal. In this game, you get a home planet, you get some ships, and you have to conquer nearby planets and try to take over the galaxy. It's multiplayer, so you're battling your neighbors to dominate the universe, and you know what? My movements were actually a little bit quicker due to the smaller screen size on the mini. And in Galcon, that timing can make all the difference. So maybe there are advantages in gaming when it comes to using the mini over the pro. Or maybe that is the one game and one instance ever where it would be better. Now for more graphically intense or layered games though, the larger iPad screen is definitely better. Like if you're in a beautiful game world and you want to experience it more fully, then the larger screen definitely does a better job of immersing you. On the other hand, there really aren't any limitations on the mini's gaming experience. You can still hook up an external game controller and I'll link up the best down in the description. So basically you just have to decide which level of mobility you're after. Very mobile with the pro or ultra mobile with the mini. So so what about things like watching YouTube or Netflix videos or reading a book or reading an article or reading the news or just surfing the web? Well here in this category is where things kind of get flipped on their head in the comparison and the mini's small size really starts to shine. In basically every category I've mentioned so far, gaming, video editing, sketching, handwriting, typing, the larger iPad screen has some sort of a bonus or benefit to using it. But the larger screen also means a heavier device, and that's not always the best when you're in media consumption mode. Like if you're reading something in bed right before you pass out at night, it's so much easier and nicer holding that mini, which you can comfortably do one-handed, than it is holding up even the smaller 11-inch iPad Pro. So much nicer. So reading or consuming media in any way, shape, or form is a lot better on the mini in terms of weight in every situation except when you're sitting at your desk and you can use a stand and you don't have to hold it. You see the pattern here? If you're at your desk, you don't have to hold anything. iPad Pro, it's better, it's bigger. If you're not at your desk, you gotta hold it to consume or do whatever you're doing. It's nicer to have the mini because it's lighter. When it comes to mobility, when it comes to travel, it really just comes down to how much bulk do you wanna bring? How much do you wanna put up with? Or how much space, how much weight do you wanna save? because you can basically do everything that you can do on the Pro on the Mini. So it's really about the bulk. So if you're looking for a new iPad Pro, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound like you're writing on real paper when you're using an Apple Pencil. Paperlike actually gives you more control when you're writing or drawing thanks to the paper-like resistance that it offers. And yeah, it really makes a big difference. Plus it reduces glare and thank goodness fingerprints as well because the new iPad Pro shows those like crazy. Paperlike is great for anyone who uses apps like Notability or Procreate. And when you place an order, you'll get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And you can pick one up using the link down in the description. Now, at the end of the day, even after all this talk about how capable the iPad mini 5 actually is versus the Pro and how much it can do, basically everything, just a matter of convenience and different form factor, which one of these would I prefer? Obviously, I mean, obviously, I would prefer the iPad Pro. But if all I had available to me was an iPad mini, I would not be stopped from doing the things that I wanna do. You can accomplish so much with this iPad mini. And also, if you just prefer the size of the mini, like that's just your thing, 
then you're not gonna miss out on being able to do things. That's the point of this video. I could just ramble here and I'm gonna stop myself from doing that. I'm gonna say thank you for watching. I'm gonna say go check out our Instagram and Twitter. Give us a follow because we interact with you guys a lot, ask you questions, I learn from you guys. Just come say hi. It's Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on both of those platforms and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.